Good afternoon. My name is Karen Wisniewski. I serve on the Vigil Organizing Committee for Fridays at Fetterman's. And on behalf of the committee, I want to thank you for coming out today. Let's begin with a moment of silence for all the people who have been killed, injured, kidnapped, held hostage, unjustly imprisoned, displaced, and traumatized by the war and violence in Palestine, in Israel, in Lebanon, and here in the United States. Children and adults, civilians and soldiers, they are all human beings with families who love them. Let us remember them in silence. to thank the five organizations that have endorsed Fridays at Fetterman's Weekly Peace Vigil. The American Friends Service Committee, Brandywine Peace Community, If Not Now Philly, The Simple Way, and the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, Greater Philadelphia Branch. The purpose of our Fridays at Fetterman's Weekly Vigil is to persuade and pressure Senator John Fetterman, our own Senator from Pennsylvania, to publicly support our demand for an immediate permanent ceasefire in Gaza that is aligned with U.S. House Resolution 786. To date, 17 courageous and visionary U.S. Congresspersons have sponsored the House ceasefire resolution. Dozens more have expressed that they are considering becoming sponsors. Slowly, our leaders are beginning to join our peace movement. We will faithfully gather outside the Philadelphia office of Senator Fetterman every Friday afternoon at, at an, and until our Senator publicly supports our demand for an immediate permanent ceasefire in Gaza. To help build an inclusive community at our weekly vigils, we read this welcome statement each week. May we welcome our neighbors from near and far. May we welcome friends, old and new, and those we are just now meeting. May we welcome curiosity and humility, vulnerability and courage, generous listening and patience, determination and passion. May we welcome activists of every stripe and all those who simply want to stand for peace in a time of war. May we welcome those of every income level and class. May we welcome people of all ages and stages of life and the unique gifts they have to share. May we welcome and validate the full range of emotions we are feeling in the wake of tragedy. May we welcome people of all faith traditions as well as agnostics, atheists, and seekers. May we welcome Jewish people, Palestinian, pe Palestinian people, and all those who have deep ties to any and all parties to the conflict. We see your pain and we embrace you. May we welcome people of all colors, races, ethnicities, and cultures, and every combination of those that exists within us. May we welcome people with disabilities, visible or invisible, and those. May we welcome people of all genders and sexual orientations, regardless of lab labels. May we welcome the ancestors who lived on this land where we are now and their descendants. Welcome. Let's continue to center ourselves. We come together with diverse points of view and experiences. We honor them. Regardless of our differences, we are united in a singular, clear focus, demanding that Senator Fetterman publicly support an immediate, permanent ceasefire in Gaza that is aligned with U.S. House Resolution 786. Our weekly peace vigil is rooted in radical nonviolence and we expect vigil participants to refrain from violent actions, words or messages verbally and on signs and banners. If you encounter conflict, breathe and seek to understand before responding calmly 
seeking support from a vigil organizer, or if necessary, walking away. We will invite speakers and artists to make brief presentations at our vigils. Inevitably, they will bring a variety of perspectives on the Israel-Palestine conflict, but each one will support our unifying call for an immediate, permanent ceasefire. Let us model peacemaking by opening our minds and hearts to ideas and feelings that do not necessarily align completely with our own. We are all learning from each other. So now we're gonna take some time, if you would introduce yourself to somebody maybe you don't know already, and just spend a few minutes with your fellow peacemaker, and then we'll come back together. today is Paul Sheldon. He's a long-term activist with Brandywine Peace Community, which has included nonviolent direct actions. He is a Quaker, a pacifist, a war tax resistor, among a million other things. Please welcome Paul Sheldon. Hello. Um, as you've heard, I'm here representing Brandywine Peace Community, an organizational endorser of these Fridays at Betterment's. My wish is that the founder of Brandywine Peace Community, my good friend Bob Smith, could be here in my place, but he is currently unwell. Bob and his former wife and friend Beth Sense founded the Peace Community in 1977 as an organizational continuation of the peace work that they had been already doing for some years. As a result, Brandywine has been faithfully involved in peace work and peace activism, often involving peaceful, nonviolent direct action and resultant arrests for more than 45 years. While there have been a number of campaigns over those years, the most notable is 45 years of witness and sometimes civil disobedience at Lockheed Martin, the world's largest weapons profiteer and nuclear contractor. Brandywine was at Lockheed Martin's King of Prussia facility in 1977 when the weapons division was still a part of General Electric before being bought by Lockheed Martin. In 1980, the first of the Plowshares actions, the Plowshares 8, occurred at this same location. Lockheed Martin, besides being the largest U.S. weapons systems contractor, has been a major supplier of weapons to Israel Israel receives the greatest amount of U.S. financial aid of any country, and they in turn use our money to buy American weapons. Hmm. Lockheed, Martin Lockheed Martin supplies the Israeli Air Force with advanced F-16 and F-35 aircraft. These planes carry guided munitions, such as the Hellfire missiles, that are also purchased from Lockheed Martin. There are many United Nations reports of these missiles being used in attacks that killed large numbers of women and children in Gaza. Lockheed Martin supplies Israel with other types of weapons and technical systems also. But enough of that. I will note that Iran does its best to supply weapons to Hamas. These weapons don't just emerge out of thin air. Why does this happen? I could talk about the history of our relationship with Iran, but as I said, we have had enough. 
enough that this must stop. This massive arms trade must stop. The United States needs to step up and recognize its responsibility for contributing to these continuing horrors. There are ways that these enormous sums of our tax money could be redirected to the purpose of reducing international tensions and leading to peaceful relationships among the world's people. For some practical proposals in this regard, and there are things that are being done, check the website of Friends National Committee, Friends Committee on National Legislation, FCNL, Friends Committee on National Legislation. Things are and can be being done at this level. But meanwhile, if you don't like what's happening with so much of your tax money, going to war-related expenses, don't pay for it. Don't. I'm a long-time war tax resistor, publicly refusing. Do you hear me, IRS? Uh, that uh, refusing to pay some of my federal taxes to the U.S. government. And instead, by the way, I don't keep it, but I redirect that money directly to peaceful purposes where our tax money should be going. And I let the IRS, of course, know all about this. They're not too happy with it, that's another story. But it's something to consider. Now again, we have a group that provides information about this. The National War Tax Resistance Coordinating Committee. National War Tax Resistance Coordinating Committee. Again, we've got the computer, go online. Put that in and you'll see their website. It's where we bring information together. We and others know a great deal about the IRS and we are not afraid of it, but we acknowledge it. Uh, uh, okay, so you are invited to join us for a peaceful demonstration by Brandywine Peace Community at the, at the Lockheed Martin facility, directly behind the King of Russia Mall, at noon on this coming Martin Luther King holiday, January 15. Monday, January 15 at noon. You can't sort of miss it. They're buildings, you will see us. One thing, if you come, dress warmly. It's been some terrible weather there. We will probably have some uh, nonviolent direct action, arrestable action, probably, being planned. Meanwhile, <clears throat> Bob Smith and the rest of us at Brandywine Peace Community are uh, delighted to be listed as endorsers of these Friday at Fetterman's events. Thank you very much. My name is Rachel. This is a poem by a Palestinian American mother. A few reasons to oppose the war by Lisa Suher Majaj. Because wind sows in the branches of trees like blood sighing through veins. Because in each country there are songs huddled like wet feathered birds. Because even though the news has nothing new to say and keeps on saying it. No still fights its way into the world. Because for every bomb that is readied, a baby nestles into her mother, latches onto a nipple beaded with milk. Because the tulips have waited all winter in the cold, dark earth. Because each morning, the wildflowers outside my window raise their yellow faces to the sun because we are all so helplessly in love with the light. Thank you so much. We're just going to take another minute to reflect on all those who are suffering from 
what's going on in Gaza and Israel. Thank you all for coming.